Lisbon, Lisbon, oh Lisbon, there were three lovely lassies from Lisbon. What? But Maggie oh. left the bell. Oh, but... Easy, sir, easy. Maggie the maggot's done the trick, sir. Your wound's as clean as a whistle. You'll be running around in a week. Sit up now, and I'll give you a nice shave, sir. <laughs> What the devil's going on, Harper? Ah, knows he's been nice to the Spanish, sir. If you ask me, he's planning the battle. Damn this leg. I should be down there catching Wellesley's eye. I'll never get me promotion confirmed lying in bed. Ah, no, no, sir. Hold steady. Damn good book, Hogan. Shakespeare, sir. Julius Caesar. Mark Anthony. Lend me your ears, eh? Huh? These many, them shall die. Their names are pricked. By God, Hogan, you may be sure my name is well pricked by those needles at horse guards. Ah. A general who wins battles and lives to claim the credit. We'll never laugh our enemies in London, sir. And yet? And yet they still behave with their usual folly and weakness. I have officers deserving commissions, notably William Lawford. And what am I sent? Flogged soldiers led by coffeehouse fops and commanded by dangerous buffoons. Sir Henry Simerson on the South Essex. Quite so. I suspect he's been sent to spy on me. Well, why not give him something to send back that will spoil their lordship's supper? Such as what, Hogan? A victory, sir. Small, but solid. Small, but solid. The bridge at Val de la Casa. Oh, something like that. I could spare the South Essex, but Sir Henry Simerson isn't up to it. No, but Richard Sharp is. Richard Sharp? Let Sharp do all the dirty work, and Simerson and that obnoxious nephew of his get all the glory. And if all does not go well, Simerson will have to keep quiet about it. And you will have them in your power. And if things go really badly... Well, we may lose a gallant officer. Not Sharp. Oh, no. Oh. Simerson. Simerson. <laughs> South Essex, Hogan. All mine. Sir Henry. Oh, sorry you've missed the parade, sir. Damn it! Missed it, have we? A dozen of the bastards pretended to faint from the heat. By God, I'll flog the fainting out of them! Drill them, Mr. Denny! Yes, sir! Carry on, drum major! Forward! March! 
Well, Hogan, what do you think of? A fine body of men, sir. Sir Arthur warned me in advance. Hogan says he, the South Essex is a sight to make you shiver. His words? Hmm. I dare say he knows I have a cousin who holds high office at Horse Guard. Have you, by Jove? Well, I hope you'll convey my respects to him at the conclusion of our mission, sir. You mind me, Hogan, I'll mind you. Make them jump to it, Mr. I wonder how he keeps them looking so shiny. He flogs them. I'm afraid you can't afford her, sir. That bastard has bought her, same as his body's commission. Major, may I introduce the jewel in our crown? Josephina, Countess La Costa. Your servant, ma'am. The late Count fell at Vimiero. You bear the loss with great fortitude, ma'am. The Countess is traveling under the protection of my nephew, Lieutenant Christian Gibbons. Now, this is his friend, Lieutenant Berry. Oh, I must say, that uniform does you credit, Mr. Gibbons. Good God! Look at Dobbs dragging his feet. Mr. Berry, at the double. At the double, Mr. Denny! Have pity, Sir Henry. There have been much sun in the hot sun all day. No lectures from you, Major Lennox. Mr. Berry, 75 lashes for Dobbs tomorrow morning when he could appreciate it. Lay them on, Mr. Berry. I must protest, Sir Henry. No, oh, by God, Lennox, I knew you were an old man when I took you out of retirement, but not an old woman. Speaking as a Virginian, sir, I must say is how I don't hold with flogging white men, sir. My dear Captain Leroy, you may be a loyalist, but you are still an American. You do not know the British soldier, sir. He is a brute beast in a red coat. He needs the lash. Whip him in, Mr. Berry. Must you go, Hogan? Fancy a brandy and a choice cigar? I know I hate to pass on a brandy and a choice cigar, Sir Henry, but duty calls. Servant, ma'am, gentlemen. No, come on, Jeremiah. Let's go and have a wash. Silly old sod. You must indulge him, dear boy. They say he has influence. He may even have the ear of the king. If Major Hogan makes his way up here, we've got to show him you're fit and ready for action. But I'm not fit and ready for action. I know that and you know that, but we can't let that murderous old bugger know that. Pat. Richard. Good to see you, Major Hogan. Good to see you, Richard. How's the knee? March up and down, boy. Splendid. Splendid. Good man, Richard. Up and about, what? Yes, sir. Pat's maggots did the trick, eh? <laughs> Where would the English be if it wasn't for the Irish? Me and Pat and Wellesley, three Irish heroes standing between Britannia and Bonaparte. Very well, sir. Time you played your part, Richard. Wellesley's worried about you. That fella's sharp, Hogan. Fella that saved my life. Fella still alive, Hogan. Alive and kicking, sir, says I. Quick at the repartee. Damn his impertinence. Don't he know there's a war on? He wants promotion, sir, says I. Again, quick at the repartee. He looks at me down his long nose. Hogan, says he. Hogan, tell Sharp that he'll never make captain nursing his health. His very words. Give Lieutenant Sharp a drink, Pat. Best brandy, Richard. Took it from the French at a porto. Sit down, man. Sit down. You seem edgy. Damned edgy. Good show, Sir Henry. Pretty sight. Spitty tell, Major. What do you want? Now, who said I wanted anything? Well, let's just say I want your opinion. Sir Henry apart, the South Essex, what do you make of them, man for man? They're flogged soldiers, sir. And flogging teaches a soldier only one lesson. What's that, Richard? How to turn his back. Do you know anything about art, Richard? Do you know Rubens, Botticelli? 
What the devil is it, sir? It's a map of Spain. Oh, sorry, it's upside down. Makes no difference either way. <laughs> now, here we have the River Tagus. And this is the town of Val de la Casa. There's a bridge here not marked. Wellesley wants us to destroy it. Can you just wave in the general direction of the French, sir? Right here, Richard. At the bridge. You want me? No. And you can't order me, sir. Bad leg wound. Doctor says so. Oh, well, that's a pity now. Because you'll miss a chance to see Teresa. Teresa? How? Well, didn't I tell you that Teresa's been looking after the French for me at Val de la Casa? On top of that, destroy that bridge at Val de la Casa and mark my words. It'll be Captain Richard Sharp. A captain? I'll drink to that. Now look, sir. The 95th are leaving for England, apart from a few that are left here. Now, if General Wellesley wants me to go into country infested by French patrols, grab a bridge and hold on to it long enough for you to blow it to kingdom come, well then, sir, I need a crack company of first-class men. My dear boy, that's exactly what Sir Arthur said. Hogan says he sharp will need a crack company. We don't have one, Sir Arthur, says I. Hogan says here, I don't care if you have to steal the best regiment in the British Army, but you find Sharp, his crack company, his very words. My God, I think he means it, Pat. A company? Oh, which one, sir? A Coldstream Guards? Oh, never. Too much to walk for. The Connaught Rangers. The Connaught Rangers? Very steady. Well, let's see. Uh, the 48th Foot, sir. March and item fight today. By God. It's not the 48th, is it? The South Essex Sharp. <coughs> John and me! Back to barracks! Riches or boots on your bloody idlers! What the blazes on the harper? They're horns, sir. If I told them once, I told them a thousand times not to go horn. Why, says I, if you're desperate to hold on to something, hold a bottle. Isn't that the best advice, sir? You bloody old bishop. What's it matter whether they piss the pox as long as they can fight? Is that you, Tom? Where are they? Well, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning and follow strong drink all day. Oh, your turn. Not now, Jezebel. Clean them up. I want them ready for the road tomorrow. Sweat them, Sergeant. Sweat them. Harris, I'll have that. God bless all here. Right, lads, fall in. We have a bit of a bridge to blow up. We ain't going anywhere, Sarge. Anywhere? Nowhere, Sarge. We ain't going to get ourselves killed. Just so Sharp can become a captain. Besides, we've not been bloody well paid for bloody well six weeks. We're heading for a porto. English ships loading wine. They'll take us. I agree. Well, I'll miss you. So, that's it. You don't want the son of a whore to raise himself out of the dirt. 
and stand the same height as Simerson and he's no good nephew. Hmm? He wants Sharp to know his place, the same way he knew your place when you first joined the Rifles. What were you? Broken down scribblers like Harris, poor little bastards like Perkins, Bible thumpers like Tom, poachers and picklocks like Hagman and Cooper. What were ye? Dust on a boot. But look at you now. Chosen men. Men who wear the white cord of courage. Picked out and promoted. Why? Because you didn't know your place. Picked out because you pushed your way to the front and proved that you were braver men than those around you because you wanted to prove you were better men than you were ever born to be. There's no sin been born in the dirt, boys. But it's a terrible sin to want to stay there. That was very dainty feet you got there, Cooper. You think will they carry you as far as the bridge? They'll carry me across the bridge. And that's a promise, Sarge. Mm. They live in saints, all right. God bless you, boys. Sergeant. Oh, the lads are fine, sir. Delighted, so they are. Always glad to be having a crack at the French. Nil desperandum. That's their motto, sir. You're a lying sod, Arthur. One hour. Yes, sir. Out of the way. You fellow, what regiment? 95th. As I say, Barry, old boy, this is one of the ragamuffins we're taking along with us tomorrow. When an officer says step aside, you step aside. Maybe this will help you to remember. In the street for a lady, ma'am. Should take a man with you. Major Hogan, I have been struck by a common soldier. I believe the penalty for striking an officer is death. Uh, death is certainly the penalty for striking that officer, sir. That was Sharp of the 95th. What? The ragamuffin that jumped from the ranks? By God, sir, I'll teach him to touch a gentleman. I'll call him out, sir. I'll see him at dawn. I'll second you, old boy. A duel? Oh, give me your hand, sir. You're a brave fellow, Gibbons. Sharp's a killer. Killed three French cavalrymen and saved Wellesley's life. Three seconds, slash, cut, thrust. And that's while he was still a sergeant. Shall we say six o'clock tomorrow morning in the field behind the camp? Or shall we say it was damn dark? And you made a damn bad mistake. Silly mistake. Say no more about it, eh? Good thinking, Gibbons. Sharp would have shot out your left eye at a minute past six. And you would have spent all day tomorrow looking up at nothing or the other. Come on. Ah. Come on. Very old boy. Don't worry, old boy. Sharp is a dead man.
Pints of rum, Pat. Half and half. You're gonna be all right, son. You're gonna be all right. Sharp special. Pint the best rum. Half and half. Half in your belly. And half in your back. Sir Henry says it keeps the chin up. There's better ways to keep a chin up. <laughs> Sharp, isn't it? Made a name for yourself in India, Battle of Assay, as I recollect. I was there myself with the 78th. I saw the 78th advance on their own. The man who made a name for himself on that day was an officer of the 78th. A man by the name of Lennox. <laughs> Uh, a long time ago. <laughs> ah, I had a life soldiering then that retired me. My wife died. The uh, South Essex was all I could get. But thank you for reminding me I was once a damn good soldier. Now, wipe your boots, I'll take you to meet a damn bad one. Oh, bleed me, damn you, Patton! This scarify is the latest thing in London. Do it! Yeah. I always find a flogging brings on a spleen. Do you find that too, Major Hogan? Oh. Watching a flogging, Sir Henry, builds up huge combustible gases in the internal organs. Combustible gas, if confined, will act like a charge of blasting powder. Speaking as an engineer, I think it were best to bleed you again. Will you hurt him? Do you think I want to burst? Bleed me! And who the devil are you, sir? Lieutenant Sharp, sir. No, you're not. You're a damn disgrace. Get him a decent jacket. No, sir. This is the green jacket of my regiment, sir, the 95th. It is an honor to wear it, sir, whatever its condition. What? You are under my orders, sir. With respect, Sir Henry, the situation is that General Wellesley has placed Lieutenant Sharp and his men in my disposition. But damn it, sir, I am in command. Well, it's just because you are in command, sir. The General Wellesley doesn't want to add to your many responsibilities, viz. the South Essex, the March to Val de la Casa, the relations with the Spanish allies. So much to do. Also, there are certain exigencies of engineering to which Lieutenant Sharp is particularly suited. Veteran Carey, eh? Well, you may get to fight too, Sharp. Done any soldiering? A little, sir. You look old for a lieutenant. I came from the ranks, sir. You mean you're not a gentleman? No, sir. By God, Sharp, this will not do. All my officers are gentlemen. That being so, sir, I think we should introduce ourselves like gentlemen. Quite so, Captain Leroy, quite so. My name's Leroy. Mighty pleased to meet you, Mr. Sharp. From America, sir. No, sir. From Virginia. Captain Leroy is one of those brave American loyalists who refuse to accept the ravages of democracy and whose father fought for his king against Washington. Washington won. Fortunately, Captain Leroy has ample means to console himself during his exile. Slaves, cotton, and molasses, sir. All melted down into golden guineas. I suppose I must introduce you to Lieutenants Gibbons and Berry. I've met the young gentleman, sir. I hope you know your place, Sharp. You've made it very clear, sir. Tell me, 
Who made you an officer? Sir Arthur Wellesley, sir. Wellesley, ha! Wellesley don't know what makes a good soldier. Not many do. Do you know Mr. Sharp? Yes, sir. And what makes a good soldier sharp? The ability to fire three rounds a minute in any weather, sir. Three a minute? The South Essex can fire two on a good day. You think you could do better, Mr. Sharp? Yes, sir. You have until sunset, sir. Any man who cannot fire three rounds a minute will be flogged. Carry on, Sharp. Yeah. It's all Wells is doing. Upstarts everywhere. But no need to tell you that, Captain Leroy. I'm told that in America, common merit counts for more than birth or wealth. Whoever told you that, sir, is a goddamn liar. Democracy or monarchy don't make no difference. Money talks. Merit walks. <laughs> Send them to Ireland. We'd be free in a week. Two rounds the minute, sir. What the devil are you doing here? Mr. Berry's orders, sir. The French are over there, waiting. They fire three rounds a minute. You fire two. By sunset tomorrow, you'll all be dead. Take off your jackets and stocks. Spits the bullet. No ramrod. Just a gentle tap of the butt to send it down. You see, 20 seconds. Now, the trick is to keep the muzzle up to stop the bloody bullet falling out. <laughs> of course, the muzzle needs to point up anyway. The frog coming towards you is high up on a horse. Right. Let's get to work. Double ranks, Mr. Denny. Double ranks. And Mr. Denny, if you see any man doing anything not in the manual... Take his name, sir. Give him half a pint of rum on the spot, Mr. Denny. <laughs> time this, Mr. Denny. Tell them to load and fire in their own time. Load and fire in your own time. Load! Josephina, I was worried about you. 
Why? Did you think that Mr. Sharp had stolen me away? Three shots and ten seconds in hand, sir. Seven, six, five, five four, three, two, two, one. Four shots a minute! Sharp. Yes, sir. Stop showing off, Sharp. Yes, sir. Soldiering, sir. This is the life. Fun, ain't it, Josephina? Have you ever been in battle, Christian? No. Hope to. Bloody good fun, eh? I saw Vimero. It made me cry. Count is not cooperating, old boy. I wish I knew what would please her. Ask the maids. What the blazes you on about there, old boy? Her name's Jacinta. I had a bit of a fumble with her last night. A bit out of the bottom drawer, Barry, eh? I'm not exactly top drawer myself, old boy. The Countess owes her maids two months' wages. I say, Barry, old boy, what say you lend me some tin and I pay the maids on the quiet? I don't lend, old boy. I'll play cards with you for three guineas. Or you can touch your Uncle Henry. Damn it, Barry, I had to touch him again yesterday to have settled what I owed you. Three guineas, double or nothing tonight, eh? Captain Leroy, tell Sharp to get a move on. Madam? Sorry about this, Sharp. It's a Henry's compliment. And you're not to dawdle in the rear. All right, lads. If we can't dawdle in the rear, we may as well dawdle in the front. Took the words out of my mouth, sir. <laughs> War is as natural to man, sir, as, uh, as, uh... As nature, sir? Huh? Yes. Natural as nature. Blazes? Quick time, sir. The rifle regiment has only two marches. Quick time and dogma. What have they brought the woman for? Because they don't know any better. Harris, Cooper, Hagman. Damn you. Sharp, it's a trouble. Come on. Come back at once, Major Lennox. Sharp brought it on himself, sir. The South Essex will advance slowly and with caution, Major Lennox. Did you get them? <laughs> <laughs>
dawdling, lads. No dawdling now. He's making fools of us. <laughs> Boys, who's for an apple? Pay him. How dare you, sir? The Spanish are our allies, sir. We do not loot comrades in arms. Don't lecture me on allies, sir. We're on our way to meet a high-ranking Spanish colonel. That's what I call an ally, not some stinking peasant. General Wolseley's orders are to pay for all food and drink, sir. Wolseley's a fool. The French live off the land, why not us? You want to pay him, Mr. Sharp. Pay him from your own purse. I will pay. This is between me and him, Countess. Quanto vale, senor? Think you've got the tin, Sharp? Nada. Is this Nada too, eh? Hey, you rough! Shoot the dragon! Don't move, Sir Henry! Sharpshooter, sir. All aiming at you. Who the devil is this? Commandante Teresa, the leader of the guerrillas. The Spanish call her the needle. Don't ask why. Buenos dias, Commandante Teresa. Let's go, Hogan, and get these fools out of here. The man with the cart is Capitan Garcia, the commander of this region. I'm hoping he will join forces with me. The guns were a token of goodwill. You understand me? Perfectly. A marriage of convenience. Well, let's be on our way, Sir Henry. <coughs> Assassinix! Follow me! We'll camp here tonight, Sir Henry. Destroy the bridge at dawn. This evening we're down with the Spanish officers. Teresa, I want you to keep Josephina company. And you'll need all your strength for tomorrow. That's an order. Good is right to be a pilgrim. I fly my home to wander the Lord. And in a soft bosom, I would build me a nest and pillow my head upon her lily white breast. When rifles crack. And can on a sodden field, I still fall in 
and if I am delivered as I hope to be, I shall sail home to England and never part from the Is Britannia as great as Napoleon? No, sir, Britannia is not. Fancy a fumble, old boy. Hmm? <laughs> well, you might as well have the maid, since you can't have the mistress. Honor as commanding officer of the South Essex, in the presence of our gallant allies, to acknowledge the auspicious portents of our Anglo Spanish alliance. And it gives me great pleasure to propose this toast, gentlemen, to His Most Catholic Majesty, King Ferdinand the Seventh. King, King Ferdinand the Seventh. Here, here, Sir Henry. Here, here. Bravo. <laughs> Captain Neal. Look, I'm going to get a bit of fresh air. Good night, Major. Enjoy yourself. I will. I've laid ten guineas with Leroy that Sir Henry will talk for a full hour. Five minutes more, and I'll have won my bet. Bravo, Sir Henry. More, more, more. Bad luck, old boy. Good night, Christian. Lieutenant Barry. Good night, Countess, dear. Did I say duty? Indeed I did. What else but duty? Lord mercy, the sweetest child shall ever be such a measure. Damn it! Uh, what else but duty? Cards, old boy? Afraid you've cleaned me out, Barry, old boy. I've no luck at cards. I've no luck in love. Nothing left. You have the counters. <laughs> and the countess has troubles. What the devil are you on about, old boy? I'll give you three guineas on her. You win, and you go and pay her maids. I'm sure she'll show her gratitude. <laughs> what happens if you win, old boy, huh? huh? Then I go and pay her maids. Yeah, yeah. I say, Barry, you don't mean, uh... Cards, old boy? I was having a wee chat with one of the maids, sir. Jacinta. Nice girl. But it seems Barry's been enjoying her favours. It appears the Countess is a wee bit hard up, sir. And, you know, she wasn't born a Countess at all, but sort of... Well, worked her way up through the ranks. So did I, Harper. If Barry's tumbling the maid, sir, he knows the Countess is in trouble. Who goes there? Beg pardon, ma'am. Condesa, no te burles de mí. Puedo pedir dinero prestado a Hogan. Así que todo el mundo lo sabe. No, nadie está seguro. Enséñales el dinero y todos callarán. ¿Y a ti qué te importa? ¿Nunca has tenido dinero en tu vida? Lo tuve. Los gabachos me lo robaron todo. ¿Qué quieres a cambio? Quiero ver sus caritas cuando les enseñes el dinero. Gibbons y Barry. Esos don Juanes solo se atreven con mujeres sin dinero. ¿Por qué escondes tus sentimientos? 
Eres buena. Hasta la mañana, señor. Hasta mañana, señor. Bad luck, old boy. No se olvide del dinero, señora. I say, very old chap. <laughs> Don't mean to back down on a debt of honor, do you, old boy? What's that for, old boy? The Countess has been very naughty. Making eyes at Sharp, making little of you. Making a fool of Sir Henry, calling herself a countess. Very naughty indeed. Naughty girls get spanked and put to bed. This or this? How about this? What's got you boys all riled up? The honor of the South Essex, sir. Lieutenant Berry unmasked this woman as an imposter and asked her to leave. This woman can't even pay her own servants. I want her out of the camp tonight. Mr. Berry, see to it. Bag and baggage. This woman is under my protection, sir. What? How dare you, sir? I hold an officer's commission. It is both my right and my duty to take a woman in distress into my care. Guess he's got that right. Only if he can pay for her protection. Mr. Berry is right, Captain Leroy. Mr. Sharp must pay the servants. Hey, Mr. Sharp. You dropped your purse when you was tussling with a young gentleman. Captain Leroy. Slaves, cotton, and molasses. Sir. I owe you a debt, Mr. Sharp. And I, Leroy. Good night. You're lucky to have him. He's lucky to have me. You risked a lot defending her.
She's very beautiful. She's a woman. She needed help. I could have killed him. I know what happened when soldiers run wild. It will cause more trouble for her. Not with you to protect her. Promise me you will take care of her. My job here is done. I brought Garcia and Major Hogan together. I'm leaving. Now. Stay with me. French infantry, sir. Small patrol, sir. Just looking. Ah, well, now. We'll be giving them something to look at. <laughs> I say, Hogan, enemy in sight. Let's get some prizes, dear boys. Hmm? Major Lennox? Sir? You will take men on the colours and chase away those damn French. But we are about to destroy the bridge, sir, and these are very green troops. Do you disobey my orders, sir? I have never disobeyed an order in my life, sir. Mr. Denny, call out the guard. Sir? Turn out the guard! Right! Stay! This is a fool's mission. Watch my flank, Sharp. Make ready. Present. Fire! What's the flag? The flag! French cavalry! Chosen men! Destroy the bridge! Destroy the bridge! God damn! Yeah! yeah. Hurry! 
damn you! Hurry! Lost the colors. <coughs> I want an eagle, an imperial eagle, touched by the hand of Bonaparte himself. Hey, shut! It's got a brass point. You push it in deep, so I can feel it. An eagle. Guess a dying man can dream. At a place called this day, I saw a whole army ready to run. And a major of the 78th took a step to his front and steadied the line. That's him, Major Lennox, 78th Highlanders. I thought he was just an old man. Sir, what will Mr. Sharp do now that Major Lennox has asked him for an eagle? I didn't hear Sharp say nothing about no eagle, Mr. Denny. And neither did you. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. You want to live, Mr. Denny? You stay away from Sharp. Lost the colors, sir. The king's own colors touched by his own hand. Take my advice and a pistol and go behind that tent and blow out what's left of your brains. Permission to speak, sir. What is it, Harper? Would you take an order from me, sir? Well, what is it? Would you, for the love of Jesus, stand easy, sir? Well, it's easy for you to say, stand easy, Harper. Tell him. Just tell him the truth, sir. Tell him that Simerson caught and run. You expect Wellington to take my word against the word of a senior officer like Simerson? Look. I... I have come to offer you my support, Mr. Sharp. If that is worth anything to you. Thank you. Harper, would you escort the Countess inside? Happy to, sir. Sir, what are you going to do? I'll do what I always do. I'll stand and fight.
Continue, Sir Henry. Well, sir, on first sighting the French, I naturally gave the order to advance. That's my style, sir. The South Essex crossed over the bridge and engaged the enemy. Major Lennox panicked. So then I fell back in good order and destroyed the bridge, sir. <clears throat> I have written to Horse Guard, sir, to state that the South Essex acquitted itself most commendably in discharging both your general orders to engage the enemy and your particular order to destroy the bridge, sir. <clears throat> Did any officer distinguish himself? Lieutenant Gibbons led the advance, sir. You may say that he is uh, tied to me by blood. But is it a tie of blood to tie my tongue and rob a brave man of his just reward? No, sir. I recommend Lieutenant Gibbons be gazetted captain, sir. And Lieutenant Sharp? Lieutenant Sharp didn't, sir. He was cut off when we destroyed the bridge. This is a report from Major Hogan, which differs somewhat from your account, Sir Henry. Major Hogan is merely an engineer, sir. Major Hogan's coat buttons up tight over a number of other duties, Sir Henry. Major Hogan reports a number of losses, Sir Henry. He says you first lost your head, and instead of destroying the bridge, you marched over it. He says you then lost your nerve and ran from a small French patrol. He says you lost ten men, a major, and two sergeants. He says you finally lost your sense of honor and destroyed the bridge, cutting off a rescue party led by Lieutenant Sharp. Major Hogan leaves the worst to the last. He says you lost the king's colors. The fault was not mine, sir. Major Lennox must answer. Major Lennox answer with his life! as you should have done if you had any sense of honor. You lost the colors of the King of England. You disgraced us, sir. You shamed us, sir. You will answer. The South Essex is stood down in name. If I wipe the name, I may wipe the shame. I am making you a battalion of detachments you will fetch and carry. The light company put up a fight, so I will let it stand under the command of a new captain. To be commanded by the newly gazetted Captain Gibbons? To be commanded by the newly gazetted Captain Sharp, sir. I have a cousin at Horse Guard, sir. And I have friends at court. The man who loses the king's colors loses the king's friendship. You have two choices, to hide in England or be a hero in Spain. I shall help you to be a hero. We had a skirmish with the French today. Tomorrow we shall have a battle. You will be the first to see a French column, sir. It is not a pretty sight. What you do then, sir, is up to you. Good morning. Listen, and listen well. You both dip into my purse. That purse is now shut. It will stay shut so long as Sharp struts around sneering at the Simmersons. You understand me? Leave Sharp to me, sir. I can make you a captain, but I cannot keep you a captain. There is talk about an Imperial Eagle Sharp. There is talk of a promise made to the late Major Lennox. Tell me on oath that the talk is just idle gossip, Sharp, or by God, sir, I promise you will walk out of that door a lieutenant. I swear on oath that no one heard me make any promise in respect of an Imperial Eagle to Major Lennox, sir. 
Colonel Lawford. Sir. You may escort Captain Sharp to the door, Colonel Lawford. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hogan. Let the French know that the fool who lost the colours is holding our flank. But, sir, that means sending a French column against... If Hogan's spies can spin a good yarn. Major Lennox was a damn fine officer. Did I ever tell you the story of how he steadied the line at Assay, Hogan? No, sir. You're a damn liar, Hogan. That's what you pay me for, sir. Do you want me for a drink? No. I've got to lick the remnants of the South Essex into shape. Watch out for Simerson, Richard. Simerson? Simerson's a fool. No, he's a coward, not a fool. You make one mistake. You heard Wellesley. I heard him. Good. I don't brew by yourself, Richard. I know it's a poor substitute, but if you can't be with her, you might as well be with your friends. For an intelligence officer, Hogan's got a loose mouth. They asked me to keep an eye on you. I'll see you in the mess this evening. You and the young Lord twins, or what? We spent three months chained in a cell in India. He had a page of the Bible. In three months, he taught me how to read and write. How can you pay back a man who teaches you to write your own name, Captain? I say, old Chavis, have some fun, eh? A duel. What's that, old boy? Nobody can beat me with a pistol at 50 paces. I've got to make Sharp call me out. A duel. Bloody wells it don't allow it. So Sharp loses even if he wins. You want a woman, old boy. Do I? You know who I want. That's the woman I had in mind. Let's call on the Countess, old boy. That's a good idea. What about Sharp? Sharp's away playing soldiers. Snap. <sighs> Those men who fought in a big battle before. One pace forward. This place is called Talavera. There's going to be a battle here tomorrow. You'll fight in it, maybe even die in it. But you won't see it. There's a lot of smoke in a battle. Our cannon, their cannon. Our shot, their shell. Our volleys, their volleys. You don't see a battle. You hear it. Black powder blasting by the ton on all sides. Black smoke blinding you and choking you and making you vomit. And the French come out of the smoke. Not in a line, but in a column. And they march towards our thin line. Kettle drums hammering like hell and a golden eagle blazing overhead. They march slowly and it takes them a long time to reach you. And you can't see them in smoke, but you can hear the drums. And they march out of the smoke and you fire a volley. And the front rank of the column falls and the next rank steps over them with drums hammering. And the column smashes your line like a hammer breaking glass. And Napoleon has won another battle. But if you don't run, if you stand until you can smell the garlic and fire volley after volley, Three rounds a minute. Then they slow down. They stop. And then they run away. 
All you've got to do is stand and fire three rounds a minute. Now, you and I know you can fire three rounds a minute. But can you stand? Sorry, sir. Sorry. Bad business, Sharon. Baron Gibbons were here with the riding crop. They got out the window when they heard us on the stairs. She's all right, Sharon. treated me like an animal. They could not make me do what they wanted. We have to stop him. You can't stop Captain Sharp, sir. You can walk away from him or you can stand behind him, but don't ever try and get in his way. I give you Colonel William Lawford, one of the future leaders of our great regiments. Colonel William Lawford. Disgusting Irish bog trotter. You know, Uncle, I don't think Lawford is Irish. So what's happening with Sharp? Oh, that's all in hand, Sir Henry. And I have to say, it was an absolute pleasure to arrange. Drink, sir. Thank you. I don't fight duels over whores. I do. Well, Sharp just threw away his promotion. My orders are perfectly clear, Lawford. Dueling is strictly forbidden. I shall make no exception in respect of Captain Sharp. If he fights Barry at dawn, he will be back among the ranks before the sun is up. There is no more to say, sir. Yes, sir. French hopping about a bit, Hogan. Yes, sir. Send out a patrol to take a look. Not too big. Eight men, two officers. I have done so, sir. About an hour ago. Captain Sharp and Lieutenant Barry. That should do the trick, Hogan. from home, sir.
Running back to show them the hero's wound, dear boy. I've decided not to wait till dawn. I'm gonna kill you tonight. But there's no hurry. I want to hear you beg for mercy first. So I'm gonna kick you again. And again. And then you can beg. This is gonna hurt quite a bit, old boy. So will the soul boy. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace never more to offend thee, but to amend my life. Amen. He won't be able to, Harper. Hello, what, sir? Amend his life. He hasn't time. Maybe you're right. He'll hardly be needing this, so... The he gets his loan back. What'll I do with him? Stick him behind the French pickets. He'll be among the glorious dead tomorrow. I think he's gone off, sir. That bastard was gone off even when he was alive. Brandy. Here's 14 shillings on the drum For those who volunteer to come To list and fight the French today Over the hills and far away o'er the hills and o'er the mains through flanders portugal and spain king george commands and we obey over the hills and far away what are you doing down here sir you should be up in the mess with your own kind they're not my own kind harper the lads want to toast your promotion sir I haven't got the stomach for it. We're fighting the French tomorrow. We could all get killed. Would you not just put it out of your mind for one night? And what man is there that hath betrothed a wife and has not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in battle and another man take her. It's Deuteronomy. There's a woman out on the street looking for Captain Sharp, sir. Oh, every cripple has his own way of walking. O'er the hills and o'er the main, through Flanders, Portugal and Spain, King George commands and we obey, over the hills and far away. Teresa. Is it true? Is it true that tomorrow you will try to take a French eagle? Lennox died at the bridge. We lost the colours. And I thought you had more sense. And I thought you knew me better. You think it's funny to die for an eagle? I am a soldier. Would you care if I died? Yes. Oh, yes. And I shall take care not to. Hogan. Horse, foot, cannon. French art number is three to one. Does he know something I don't, Hogan? He knows three things, Lawford. He knows that on his right, the French will not attack the fort. He knows that on his left, Simerson will run. And in the center, he knows that Daddy Hill will stand. 
Means nothing to me either, Lawford. That's why he's a general and we ain't. And what are your intentions, Sir Arthur? Why, Hogan? I mean to give the French a damn good thrashing. Yesterday, sir, when you let off the cannon. Ah, you're a bloody liar, Dobbs. Brooding on poor Barry, dear boy. Death of a hero. We must all hope to die so bravely. What the devil's that? Fire three rounds a minute. But what I want to know now is can you stand? Three rounds a minute, Captain Leroy. Chosen some men, some men! Hey! Where you boys going? Hey! Danny, you come back here, you hear? Do some shooting.
damn it, Denny. I told you to stay away from him. Dobbs. Sir? I'd like to join the rifles, Dobbs. That I would, sir. It's a good life. If you can stay alive. Well done, sir, and all done, sir. What a pounding the South Essex gave that column. And the advance of the 48th. Talavera will be the talk of London, sir. Hogan. Sir? Did he? Yes, sir. Pity Lennox ain't here to see it. Damn fine officer, Major Lennox. Yes, he won. He won so well, they made him a lord. Lord Wellington. I came to say goodbye, Richard. What will you do? Where will you go? Captain Leroy has been very kind. I'm leaving for Lisbon today. Vaya con Dios, Josefina. to become for them captain. I needed an eagle to be certain. Young Denny, dead. All the others, all that blood. For an eagle. Slaves, cotton and molasses, you said. Slaves bleed. All that black blood to fill a purse, sir. Shave, sir. Water. Water? Says you'll be asking me for brandy next. Brandy, sir. Get that into you, sir, and you'll be fit for an Irish funeral. <laughs> Major Hogan. As from noon today, Colonel Lawford will be the beneficiary of Simerson's folly. Sir? He will take over acting command of the South Essex. And Simerson? War office whitewash, exoneration, and a blind eye. You're keeping well, Richard. Aye. I'm mending. Why? 
Richard. Richard. Your mind has been making appointments. Your body should never keep. What do you mean by that, sir? You have ambition, which could be the making of you. But you also have a romantic soul, which could be the breaking of you. Ambition and romance is a poisonous brew. And I mean to distill the one from the other. You questioning my loyalty, sir? I would stand it against yours. Or is it that you see something in me that you've lost in yourself? Oh, believe me, Richard, I've drunk of the cup. And it's intoxication I can well remember. I can hold the drink, sir. See that you do, Sharp. See that you do. You lived. Just about. You got what you wanted? Oh, yes, I did. And you? What do you want? Me? I want life to be simple again. Simple? What do you mean, simple? Me. Alone. That simple. So you want to be alone? No. Neither do I. Shoulder, arms! Present! Fire! Shoulder, arms! Rifles! Left! Fist! Forward! March! Here's 40 shillings on the drum to those who volunteer to come to list and fight the foe today over the hills and far away o'er the hills and o'er the main through Flanders, Portugal and Spain King George commands and we obey over the hills 